Real life parenting from the heart. Real life parenting from the heart. Hey friends, Coach George here. Why do I say that? Because I'm actually sitting on a high school campus baseball field where I used to coach decades ago. And so in the spirit of sports, our topic tonight is game changers and how we can get insights from sports psychology. So what do we want to know about sports psychology? Many of us know a lot about it by being sports fans or having kids in youth sports. But the basic premise happens to be perfectly parallel with what the church fathers teach. And that is the idea in sports psychology is you have this amazing, equipped, talented athlete has what it takes to have that winning season, that winning game, showing up in a terrific way. And yet, with all of that going for them, what happens when the athlete gets in their head, it messes with their game. That you hear, think, was Gomez absolutely losing it in the dugout. That's our premise. If we learn nothing else, we want to just almost grab onto that and reflect on that. When do I get in my head? And in what ways does that mess with my game? The church fathers call it the logis me. When we leave our heart, when we leave the place, that centered place where he meets us and we're triggered by fear or desire, fear takes us out of the present moment. In sports psychology, the athlete starts focusing on the outcome and fearing a bad outcome sometimes triggered by actually a past event that was painful that they want to prevent. And so then they overfocus. Overthinking is characteristic of being in our head. Painful in the past, prevent that by trying to control the future. Focus on the outcome and all the anxiety shows up because the athlete is no longer in the present moment. He's either in the past or the future. Plenty of valid reasons to be triggered by fear today as parents. And yet we're not called to be fear-driven parents. Research even shows that fear leads to control. Control leads to reactivity, rendering us powerless and ineffective in our parenting. And so both in our Christian journey as well as in our parenting journey, what we're talking about is, do I understand myself enough when I'm triggered? What happens to your game when you're in your head? What happens to your parenting? We want to discuss this. We want to be open about this. Sometimes we even want to be apologetic about it when we cross the line because we know that being in our head does mess with our parenting game. So let's talk about our kids just for a moment. They're already known as a generation of overthinkers. It means if we're using sports psychology language that they've gotten into their head a long time ago, that they're focusing on outcome and very often inadvertently we might even contribute to it certainly the bigger society contributes to not only are they defined by externals and how they look and how they show up but also we want them to do well and sometimes they process that as their performance defines their value anxiety is at highest numbers i've ever seen it among young people today and so we want to have a sense of as parents as people as christians do we know how to go from our head to our heart. That is our spiritual practice, to do that on a regular basis. As we do that, we then offer the possibility that our kids, through the way that we show up to them and tune into their heart and not get stressed out by every misstep they have, but stay centered so that we help them go from their head back to their heart. They can feel soothed and loved and supported and actually believe that who they are on the inside is good enough rather than going into their head and worried about too many things in the future. So let's consider this journey from head to heart. We're gonna take a look at athletes that are in their heart. They absolutely connect with the process they're in. That's their focus on the ball that's coming to them, not the grounder that happened last inning or might happen next inning. They experience the joy of the game. They have the ability to look at the bigger picture, not obsessing over the negative. They're in the present moment. That athlete not only experiences the joy of the game, but they experience joy in their personal life because they're connected to their inner life. As we follow these principles, as we connect with our inner life, we are able to connect with the inner life of our kids.
And certainly through it all, life in the heart guarantees gratitude and gratitude guarantees that we'll be connected to our inner life. So let's consider this journey from head to heart. Thanks, George. I love what you're saying. This whole idea of sports psychology and the idea when people get in slumps, they're in their head and they're trying to figure things out. And so what we're talking about is so crucial to health, I think, in families to be connected and authentic and real is what God created us to be. And when we get in our heads, we lose ourselves and we don't want the head silencing the heart. We want the heart to guide the mind to respond and reflect the light of Christ in the world, whatever we um, are challenged with. That's our calling. We're be, uh, to be mindful from this, not to react from our, our head, but respond from our heart. Uh, so a, a little brain science that helps us and help us understand a bit of what's going on. This is our hand brain model, and it's a great symbol of our brain. It's not exactly what the brain looks like, but it can help us communicate things about our brain and how we're feeling. Like, look at this. See how our cerebrum and prefrontal cortex wrap snugly over our amygdala, keeping it nice and secure? When our prefrontal cortex is in control, we feel happy, calm, and focused. We are ready to do our best learning. But we don't always feel that way, do we? Sometimes we feel upset, or angry, or frustrated, or too excited. And that's okay. We all have times where our emotions take over and we have a hard time focusing and making smart decisions. When we feel this way, it's because our amygdala is in control. We can represent this by opening our palm to show our amygdala. It's kind of like saying, I flipped my lid and now my amygdala is in control. Right now, we can't even see the prefrontal cortex. Our hand brain model gives us a great way to communicate which part of our brain is in control. And that's really important because when our amygdala takes control, we have a very hard time focusing. The amygdala is great at emotions, but not so great at making decisions. But why is that? I'm curious to learn more about my amygdala. The amygdala, amygdala comes from the word amygdala, which is almond, it's an almond shaped gland. The amygdala's sole job is to uh, scan the area and look out for danger, any, any threat. It could be any perceived threat, real threat, emotional danger, physical danger. Even if our ego is in danger, it sets off an alert. Uh, fire and tornado is the same, according to this, this amygdala doesn't care. If there's any kind of threat, fire or tornado is the same as maybe being called out in class or maybe sh being shamed in your home or maybe being called out in your home. Um, doesn't know it's big danger, small danger. So this gets activated really, really quickly. Uh, so let's say we're walking in the desert and we're peaceful and everything's great and, and we're enjoying the walk and all of a sudden we see a snake, what's gonna happen? <coughs> this disconnects, right? <coughs> it's like a disconnect. You're, you flip your lid, so to speak, um, because why? We don't have time to, um, to rationally think, is it a poisonous snake? Is, is it far away from us? Is it gonna kill us? This thing just takes over the amygdala. After we find a, a way to, to be safe, we reconnect and we find that peace, right? So let's say your kid wants an ice cream and they say, well, Daddy, I want an ice cream. I said, can't have, can have an ice cream. I want an ice cream. Can't have an ice cream. I want ice cream. Honey, you can't have an ice cream. I want an ice cream right now. So something got threatened. Maybe what he wanted, his ego, maybe he was hungry. Who knows? But that flipped. So what that does is he has no way to allow to have any part in our conversation. So what happens to that is if I'm not centered and grounded, if I get into my head and I'm into my heart, then what do I do? I flip. So we have two beautiful people trying to make sense of this important thing of this kid wanting ice cream. So something as simple as ice cream can cause you both to flip. And like I said, once you relax and calm down, you can find ways to talk to your son or daughter and say things like this that gets them into their body in the moment. I see you're really upset. You really wanted an ice cream, didn't you? I wish I can give you five ice creams today. You're wearing your sneakers. It's five o'clock in the afternoon. My hope is we, we learn how to pay attention to that uh, because St. Theophilus the Recluse says, you got to get out of your head and into your heart. Right now, your thoughts are in your head and God seems to be outside of you. Your prayer and your spiritual exercises also remain exterior. As long as you remain in your head, 
you will never master your thoughts. That world around your head like snow in a winter storm or mosquitoes in a summer's heat. If you descend into your heart, you'll have no more difficulty there. Your mind will empty out and your thoughts will dissipate. Thoughts are always in your mind chasing one another about. Uh, the heart wants to be in alignment with the mind so it can guide it into beautiful things, into healthy relationships, into life-giving conversations. So the whole idea is, how do we get out of our head into our heart? Using what we know from sports psychology, what are a few game changers we come away with today? Notice and recognize our triggers. When my child is anxious and angry and reactive, and our interactions makes me feel panicky or out of control, if I'm not aware that this dance is happening and I flipped a lid, most likely I will respond in a very unhelpful way. So what do I do? Time out. Stop, breathe, refocus, and make that important descent to my heart. And after I've had a chance to breathe, refocus and calm down, then I can open up space to return and tune into the heartbeat of my child, validating their feelings, redirecting, and showing up in a way that's actually helpful. Practice. Like any athlete or musician, we have to practice our skills over and over again to get better. And let's face it, parenting is hard and messy and we make a lot of mistakes. But instead of checking out or walking off the field, we just need to gain courage to try and try again. And sometimes we need to raise our hand and say, I've blown it, I foul. Forgive me, I'm moving on. We need to offer grace to ourselves and to our family members that we need do-overs. We need restarts. And most importantly, we need to confront our own brokenness and what's the story behind the story. Maybe we need counseling. Maybe we need connection and confession with our priest and our spiritual father. That's when our true healing begins. The most important team you'll ever be a part of is your family. Sometimes we need to gather up in a huddle and have open conversations about how we wanna play this game differently. Me as an individual player, I need to stop and settle down and examine my own skills and my own heart. And then when we get back into the game, we need to invite Christ every single day who is knocking at the door of our hearts to transform and change us from the inside out. This is a lifelong, amazing journey in the arena called family. Our hope for all of us as parents is that we can respond to real life struggles with grace, hope, mercy, and love. And we've got the best guidebook possible. We have the scriptures, we have the teachings of our holy fathers and mothers, and we have the beautiful rhythm of the liturgical life, helping us to show up as better people, grounded and connected in Christ, so that we can parent face to face and heart to heart. Real life, parenting from the heart. Real life, parenting from the heart.